What do you think of when you hear the word structure? Maybe you think of a building, a skyscraper, a feat of architecture and civil engineering. Maybe you think of a plane structure, like the kind you'd see at a park, with slides and swings. The word structure has many definitions. According to Merriam-Webster, it can mean something that's constructed, the arrangement of particles in a definite pattern of organization, or the arrangement of particles or parts in a substance or body. When talking about materials, structure can mean any of these things. We can be talking about the macroscopic structure of a material, a bike frame that's been constructed. We could be talking about the microstructure, the arrangement of particles in a composite or the arrangement of atoms in a crystalline material, a definite pattern of organization. Or we can be talking about the atoms themselves and atomic bonding, how parts or particles are arranged within a substance or body. In material science and engineering, when we talk about structure, we're often focused on the atomic or microstructure, but we care about materials at all length scales. Now, if you're trying to design something with a material, you might be thinking, well, I don't need to care about the atomic structure. I'm here to show you why you should. Let's take an example, two polymers, ones you'll be familiar with. The first is polyethylene. It makes up so many different things, including plastic bags. The second is PTFE, or Teflon. It's known for its nonstick coating capabilities in various pots and pans, like the one I have here. Now, looking them from the surface, they look quite different, and they're used in extremely different applications. But let's compare these two polymers atomically. They are actually quite similar. Polyethylene has a carbon backbone with hydrogen side groups repeating. Teflon has the same carbon backbone, but the hydrogen atoms have been replaced with fluorine atoms. Now, fluorine has a significantly different electronegativity than hydrogen. This, along with density of polymer chains and some other factors, leads to this dramatic difference in properties and performance. But atomically, only one thing is really different. That's a pretty big impact for something so small. In this ANSYS innovation course on the introduction to material structure, we'll be laying the foundations to understand the impact that these structures can have. We'll start by classifying atomic bonds based on general features. We'll look at the difference between crystalline and amorphous materials based on atomic arrangement. We'll define what a unit cell is for a crystalline material. We'll identify the basics of polymeric chains. And finally, we'll see the impact that reinforcement, matrix, and interface have on a composite structure, properties, and performance. My name's Dr. Caitlin Tyler, and I'll be your instructor for this course. Thanks for joining me today, and let's get started.